The Beguiled is a 1971 film directed by Don Siegel and starring Clint Eastwood. It sees Eastwood playing a soldier who fights for the North, uh, but he's injured and is taken in by a girls' school uh, that is in the southern region. Obviously, he's got soldiers who fight for the South looking for him. If they capture him, they will at the very least arrest him, if not kill him. These women kind of, they think we'll get him well enough to then get him out and we'll, we'll turn him over to the, to the South. What's gonna happen? Will they eventually turn him over? Or will he ingratiate himself into their clan, so to speak? Will the North and South divide be conquered through the relationships that, that these people build within this school? Uh, no. No, it won't. But what will happen is the battle of the sexes will truly come to the fore. Now, I once read a book that said women give sex to get love and men give love to get sex. Now, that's very kind of rudimentary, like, look at male and female dynamics. But I do think there is some truth in that. Um, and I think this film deals with that very thing very well, I would say. You know, here we've got a group of women who all live together, you know, on their own. They've got no men around except the odd occasion, a few soldiers that pass through. Uh, and yeah, this, this, you know, attractive soldier who fights for the opposing side happens upon them and it just so happens he's, he's quite charming you know he's attractive he's charming and he starts to kind of wheedle his way into their graces and each of these different women in some way starts to fantasize about him as a result of that they, they start to give pieces of themselves away to him uh, at which he is only too happy to take so he he kind of manipulates that he, he does what um, you know, any kind of lecherous man would do, and he takes advantage of those advances. But he 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 charms them, and he he offers them a presentation of love, shall we say? Uh, it's 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 disingenuous. It's not genuine. It's just it, it, he uses it to to get in their graces and to ultimately to, to have sex, but also, I think, to to try and get better so that he can escape. Uh, he, he uses them and, and they, they, they use him to a very large degree as well. So it, it really is a twisted film in many respects. The first kind of like 40 minutes of this, I, I wasn't that into it. I was a bit like, ooh, it's... it's uh, not really going places. It's just like I get it. It was, it was a lot of setup, uh, but then we we had a lot of female characters in the school to kind of introduce, and each one of them in some way has to have an attraction to this character played by Eastwood. So as we're getting to each of them, it starts to feel a little bit repetitive. But then, as I say, you hit like the 40, 50 minute mark. And that's when it starts to get interesting. That's when things start to take a darker turn and it starts to go places that quite frankly, I wasn't really expecting. Uh, and it does get quite twisted. I mean, for a start, we've got this character, Martha Farnworth, played by Geraldine Page, who, <laughs> yes, yeah, so she's, she's the woman who runs this school and yeah, there's this kind of backstory where they constantly allude to the fact that she had a rather incestuous relationship with her brother uh, before he left and, and went off to war and didn't return. Um, and they play with that throughout the film and um, it becomes quite quite a, a moment, particularly right near the end of the film. Uh, and yeah, like I say, it's dark. It goes places I really wasn't expecting. It deals with themes and, uh, and issues of the psyche that I wasn't expecting. Uh, and I think a lot of that primarily is down to the fact that I have seen the uh, Sofia Coppola 
remake of this. I don't know. I don't know if she would call it a remake or a retelling, a reimagining, whatever the term. Either way, it's a film that's been done once, and she she did it again. She did a new adaptation of it uh, with Colin Farrell. I'd seen that one, and I got to say. I was a bit bored with that one and I felt like it didn't quite, it wasn't quite willing to go to the places that this one went to. Um, and I, I feel like it was much shorter as well. I believe it was like 80 minutes long. It wasn't a long film at all, but it felt much longer than what it was. Whereas this is the other way around. Yeah, the you know first 40 minutes or so is a bit plodding. Not, not, not terribly boring or anything just like a bit repetitive but once it kicks into gear and once everybody starts having their own agenda and their own politics and those things those wires start getting crossed and Eastwood's character's got to start lying to different girls in order to keep up his image with each one of them consecutively it it gets gripping it gets interesting it gets dramatic and tense um and I I didn't find that with Coppola's film. So I, I think, yeah, coming into this one, expecting essentially a version of that, obviously, because they're both a telling of the same story. Um, I, I, yeah, I got more than I bargained for with this one, in a good way, a positive way. May Mercer in this as well was quite surprising uh, for, for multiple reasons. Uh, so she, she plays this slave girl called Hallie, so she's, she's the, the servant around the school, she's a black woman, uh, obviously right smack bang in the middle of this north-south divide. It surprises me because of the way she's represented. Um, she's a strong, independent, uh, really single-minded woman who uh, she, she tolerates her circumstances because she she has very little choice uh but she she's a smart cookie she's not um a subservient kind of just do as you're told um and you know she, she's not waiting for the white savior kind of to come in and so she, she's complex that's the thing um and it's like it's something I've noticed with with a lot of Eastwood movies or certainly a few Eastwood movies at any rate which is that they often have a lot of outdated ideas about them uh, with, with regards to men and women and chauvinism, this, that and the other. And yet there is also often, very often, um, a very modern take, I would say, on race relations, on, on the representation of minority characters uh, when it comes to skin colour at any rate. You know, I think about Outlaw Josie Wales and, and, and films like that. And I just, yeah, like I see movies of this ilk set in this period, uh, made from around the same time where this character would be much more cringy to watch, quite frankly. Whereas I could see Mercer's character from this film fitting quite easily into like a Tarantino movie or something like that. You know, somebody who just doesn't take any crap, but knows the, the, the place that she's kind of forced to be in life. Like, there's a really nice scene when uh, she, she gives, gives some sass to the, the rest of the girls, particularly one who, who isn't pulling her weight. She's not working in the field, she's just standing there talking. And she ain't afraid to say, look, pick up a hoe and stop being a hoe. Get on with your work. So yeah, I, I liked that. It, it was, again, as with much of this film, it was surprising. It was challenging. So I would highly recommend The Beguiled. Uh, it probably wouldn't crack my top 10 Eastwood or anything, but it's as as, as more, far more often than not through this Eastwood run. Uh, he just, he's made a lot of really good movies. Um, you know, he sits quite comfortably in that four star run where I, I pretty much expect nothing less than a four-star movie. And aside from, like, three movies that I've done so far of his, um, they, they've all sat very comfortably in, in the four-star kind of spectrum. So, yeah, excellent stuff. Um, 
But do you agree? Have you seen The Beguiled? And if so, what did you think about it? Please leave your comments down below. Do check out my Patreon and membership programs so you can find out how to support this channel and what you get in return. And until next time, cracking.